there's been some media reports saying that the charging speed of Tesla's Cybercab is, well, they're saying it's 19 kilowatt. It doesn't charge through a cable. It charges only wirelessly. So is this actually true? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking, guys. Great to have you with us. And, you know, if you're here in Australia, I would love to see you at the Sydney EV show where I'll be speaking about all the new EVs coming to Australia. I'm going to give you my recommendations on which ones I think are worth buying. But also, I'm going to be talking about Tony Sieber's predictions on global disruption and robotics, whether or not your job will be safe in 10 years' time from now or even five years' time from now. Anyhow, what is going on with these claims from Tesla? Well, how, how do we know that the CyberCab charges at or only 19 kilowatt wirelessly? Well, during the Wii Robot event, CEO Elon Musk said the CyberCab would not be equipped with a NAX charging port. He said it will have an inductive charging system. I don't think that'll be true. I think Tesla are gonna go back on that. I think they're actually gonna sell the Model 2 as a non-robotaxi version as well, which will have a NAX charging port. So there'll be two different versions of this car. Uh, but, you know, that's just my speculation. I don't know if that's true. Tesla did say that there is a wireless charger. They showed it wireless charging. And Tesla has been working on wireless charging now for quite a while for their EVs. During the Wii Robot event, the screen actually showed how fast the CyberCab was charging. In the video, you can see Tesla's wireless charging pad is an angular square that the CyberCab could back into. And it was charging at 19 kilowatt when it had 35% state of charge in the battery. How big is the battery pack? No one knows. So 19 kilowatt, is that fast? Well, you know what? I don't know because is this AC charging? Is this DC charging? No one actually knows if this is AC or DC. It's possible that it can, can charge at much faster speeds. Minimum clearly is 19 kilowatt, but I think that's too slow. I think it doesn't make logical sense. The reason it doesn't make sense is because this would mean Tesla's cyber cabs will be off the road too frequently. When the battery is exhausted, right? There's no solar panels on this car. I think it should have solar panels on the car like Aptera are doing, but there's no solar on the car. So when the battery is exhausted, it's gonna take a long time to charge it. 19 kilowatt charging is probably take four or five hours to actually recharge. That just doesn't make sense. It's just impractical. I think the charging will have to be at least 60 kilowatt for this vehicle to make any fundamental sense when it comes to being used as a robot taxi. I mean, look, Tesla's in talks with Uber to be, you know be, have this partnership to start rolling out these autonomous vehicles. And Uber's got to be thinking to themselves, oh, okay, so every time it's run out of battery, we have to charge, sit it there for doing nothing for five hours. That's illogical. Therefore, that's, I believe, the reason why it has to charge much, much faster than that. Tesla's wall connector, apparently, in the United States, charges at 11.5 kilowatt, but in Australia and other countries, it charges at 22 kilowatts. So that would mean that Tesla's wireless charging, therefore, is slower than... Slow, slower than the actual AC charging, which doesn't add up. Anyhow, we do know one other interesting thing, which is probably more relevant and probably more exciting. The CyberCab will use 4680 battery cells. I think those battery cells will be LFP, uh, the limiting factor, they agree with me. And they say that in a previous video, an LFP 4680 battery pack is the best all around battery pack option in Tesla's arsenal. And that's why Tesla are now actually working on their claim 4680 battery cells using lithium ion phosphate chemistry. This would make sense. Now there's some claims from the limiting factor that um, Tesla's 4680 lithium ion phosphate batteries would be significantly better than other batteries. Say for example, the BYD Blade battery, which yeah, that's pretty old technology now. So that's where I would agree with that. But Cadle's Chillin battery or Cadle's Chillin lithium ion phosphate battery. What about Cadle's new million mile battery I mean, that could be a good option for a cyber cab type vehicle that would probably make logical sense but of course tesla can't use those lithium ion phosphate batteries in america if they want to qualify for ev incentives so that's probably the limit there either way though tesla have provided a hint they have said yes it's true that i'll be using 4680 battery cells for the cyber cab so that's kind of exciting 4680 battery cells in theory could potentially charge at pretty fast speeds. I mean, we know that the Tesla Cybertruck in Europe is able to charge at over 350 kilowatt. But we don't know if the Cybercab has a 400 volt architecture or an 800 volt architecture. 
My guess would be 400 volt because that will keep the cost down. A 400 volt architecture along with structural battery pack with 4680 LFP battery cells would help Tesla to you know, minimize the cost of production. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.